everybody. I'm back from my travels to Glastonbury, where I was having a wonderful time going up and down the tour and round the tour and to other various magical places. And I hope to put my little film together soon of that. I've got some interviews coming up with various people over the next few weeks as well. So that's all good. But I'm being in Glastonbury was quite transforming. I was feeling the energies and feeling the difference in myself and being in that magical little town where all the magic of the olden days and the growl and such like, and feeling the energy of the gods and the goddesses. And I felt in myself quite a transformation. I felt that, um, well, I don't know how to put it really, but I definitely came away a bit more enlivened and happy in myself. I normally am quite a happy-go-lucky kind of person, but there was... It was a good time to go to, I went to the Megalithomania conference, which was fantastic and learned lots of new things and confirmed a few of my own theories, which I will do shows of, do articles for Hermes Risen, the magazine that I edit with various other friends. Hermes Risen is online. Please do go and check it out if you want something to read. We tend to put articles up every few days or once a week or something, but they're all very good, from very good writers, excellent writers on esoteric stuff that goes from, I don't know, theosophy to theology, all the way around the alphabet. And I'm using the word T today for transformation, because like I was saying, my Glastonbury trip, I felt myself having lots of hopefully good transformations in, within myself and working on myself and pondering a lot in that magical area, looking for the growl, went a little searching for the growl, and they have found it within me, who knows? But transformation, this is one of the major things of the Gurdjieff work. It's all about transforming all them energies from the lower to the higher, it's alchemy, you know, from lead to gold. We're transforming our lower energies to higher energies so that we can work with the divine cosmos and the harmony of the universe going around. We're trying to take ourselves out of the irregular, chaotic energies that are the unreal life that's going on. You know, like I've said before, I normally call it just the rat race life, which we get caught up in. We're trying to transform ourselves into a more harmonious person so that we're flowing with the harmony and of the universe. So I looked up some transformation quotes from Mr. Gurdjieff, and I'm going to start with all and everything. And this is from page 25. So this is the first chapter. That transformation which should in general proceed in the entirety of a man and give him from his own conscious mentation the results he ought to have, which are proper to man. And as I've discussed in many of my shows, if you want to look through the Gurdjieff works, I've done many videos of that now. When we're asleep, we're not running out running along properly within ourselves or with the universe we're not running with it we're going against it and we're trying to transform ourselves so that we become in tune with the universe and the divine sources plans and his the divine sources laws of how the universe works i've said before how i've always been a bit of a rebel and hate being part of anything or being in a club as what's it groucho mark said you know if a, if a group invited him along he wouldn't go because you know they obviously wanted him and he doesn't belong to anything and I don't myself but I would like to work with the divine I would like to be part of the divine cosmos machinations that are going on that are making the whole universe work in harmony and not be in the chaotic unruly way of living and as you were saying here for this we need conscious mentation and to have proper conscious mentation, that will mean we would be working correctly. We would be right man or right woman. And he goes on to say, I'll try and put my glasses on in All and Everything, page 130. The first kind or first principle of being existence, which is called Fula Nittaminian, is proper to the existence of all free brain beings arising on any planet of our great universe. And the fundamental aim and sense of the existence of these beings is that there must proceed through them the transmutation of cosmic substances necessary for the common cosmic 
Trogo Auto Ego Cratic Process. I've done a show on the Trogo Auto Ego Cratic Process, but we're trying to develop ourselves so that we can proceed and be part of the common cosmic Trogo Auto Ego Cratic Process. And here's a little uh, quote about that. Everything in the universe, both the intentionally created and the later automatically arisen, exists and is maintained exclusively on the basis of the common cosmic trogo auto egocratic process. This most great common cosmic trogo auto egocratic process was actualized by our endless uni being when our most great and most holy son absolute had already existed, on which our all gracious endless creator had and still has the chief place of his existence. This system, which maintains everything arisen and existing was actualized by our endless creator in order that what is called the exchange of substances or the reciprocal feeding of everything that exists might proceed in the universe and thereby that the merciless hieroglyphs may not have its maleficent effect on the sun absolute. And that mighty hieroglyphs is time. Time is eating away at the sun absolute, the heaven where the divine source lives. And to slow that progress down, this is why the divine endlessness created the universe and set all the laws in motion of the common cosmic Togo Wato egocratic process to maintain his heaven, his place where he lived, the sun absolute and the universe. And that only works when, well, it works thankfully with the rest of the planets in the universe, they're all in harmony with it. It's just our planet that isn't. We're not working along with it. As Gurdjieff says, we live in this lunatic asylum because we don't seem to be working along or being part of the common process, the common cosmic process of everything. Instead, we're living in this chaotic world, which isn't in tune with anything, it just things seem to happen at us rather than us living and being and doing things so that they work for us and for the uh, cause of the of his endlessness, his endlessness being the divine source, God. So we're working towards doing that and to do that we need to transmute within ourselves and transform ourselves so that we flow with it, we're part of this existence instead of being just in it we want to be playing along or playing along is that the right word going along with it working with it so that we can when we're in tune with the divine with his endlessness with this common cosmic trogo auto process autocratic process we are harmonizing with it and our lives we are living them rather than just you know just going along law of accident as they say we just doing things but we're not doing it as in actually being it we're just we're not even doing we're just following things and letting things happen to us when we want it to be the other way around when we want to be doing things and making things happen and that's all part of this transmutation process this transformation so let me go back to my bookmarks Still on the same page of page 130 of All and Everything. It is according to the second principle of being existence, and this is called Itoclanots, that all one braid and two brain beings exist. The sense and aim of these beings also consist in this, that there are transmuted through them the cosmic substances required, not for purposes of a common cosmic character, but only for that solar system, or even for that planet alone, in which and upon which these one-brained and two-brained beings arose. Well, we're free-brained beings, so we're trying to harmonise all our free centres so that we can live in harmony and help this planet develop as well. If humanity doesn't develop, doesn't evolve, our planet doesn't evolve either. And I wouldn't like to see our lovely planet Earth failing in its mission because us silly humans are too busy being materialistic and secular and not doing the right thing, too busy living for ourselves rather than for the whole of everything, you know, holistic. So he says on All and Everything, page 772, the transformation through then of the cosmic substances required for the common cosmic trogo auto egocratic process 
according to the sacred law of Heptapara Passionok, seven, proceeds on these same principles on which it proceeds for our common presences and also through the presences of your favourites. Through each of them, your favourites, the cos which is us, the humans, because he's talking to Hussein, his grandson, his, his grandson's taken a liking to us humans. For each of them, the cosmic substances arising in all seven stoppingers of the sacred Hector Para Passionok could be transformed. So if we're working on ourselves, we're working on the laws working within us and in the universe that's going on outside. So we're taking it in and then putting it back out. Um, you know, we're in, involuting and evoluting. We want to help the universe as well as ourselves. We want to be part of the common cosmic progo autocratic process. And I said in a video the other day, where I was reading from Jean Toomer about how there's different types of people. And we're that class, if you're watching these videos, I'm sure that's what you are, because you wouldn't be if you was asleep, you'd not be interested in my shows at all. But if you're awake or awakening or trying to wake up and be part of it all because you sense there's something more to life than just you know this everyday world that our peers try to put us into you want to waken up to it and to do that you want to get attuned to the cosmic laws and be part of it and flow along with it you know you want to be in the in the in the good tribe not the bad tribe that's just doing its own things for itself we're trying to do something where we're all working together to help the planet ourselves, the universe, and the divine, his endlessness. I can't remember what else I was going to say about that then. I had a little thing going in my head and it all went. <laughs> but it's all part of these laws that Gurdjieff talks about in his books, which I know sound really complicated. Once you start just getting the basics and the rest of it starts flowing because it's all cogs within cogs that make everything else work. It all goes round. I'm doing my roundy roundy. Someone else saying to me that I like to do roundy roundy everything goes round or as uh, Roger Hargreaves used to say it's better to be a roundy than a squarey for those who used to read his books I used to love them books so we're trying to make these cosmic substances work within us so that we can then put them back out there and then cosmic substances are going all the time as I've said before they're all there our higher self is talking down to us but we're not listening when we're asleep when we start waking up, we start hearing it and feeling it or getting little uh, hints from it or little uh, <laughs> synchronicities, you start noticing more and things start happening. So also on All and Everything, page 780, the free brain beings of the planet Earth are not only, as we are, apparatuses for the transformation of the cosmic substances required for the most great trogo auto ego crap with the qualities of all the free forces of the fundamental common cosmic triomasi camno or free but also themselves observing these substances for transformation from three different sources of independent arisings having all the possibilities of assimilating besides the substances necessary for the maintenance of their own existence also those substances which go for the coating and perfecting of their own higher being bodies so we're doing all this, not just for our own bodies as we're walking about this planet on this earth, you know, and trying to live a real life, be a real person. We're also doing it so we can develop our higher being bodies, which are there for us to use, hopefully in this life, if we can make them in time before we, we die. But after we've died, they're there for us, our soul to go into and to carry on to the next stage. So we're not doing it just for this life. For now, we're doing it for what happens after we die? You know, do you want to live on or do you want to get caught up in the reincarnation cycle and just come back again and have to start all over again? If you can develop yourselves and your higher being bodies, this is a way forward. This is the evolving of yourself. And the more people that can be doing this and working on this, which there are, there's many people out there doing it. You know, and we create our magnetic center so that we can start meeting each other and finding each other. You know, we create a magnetic center by doing this transformation and this transmutation of all the energies that are coming down to us and within us. And I know it is hard work. You know, I've said before in other shows about how we have to look at ourselves and it can be quite. Ooh, but uh, <laughs> YouTube will probably keep that picture from my thumbnail. But that working on ourselves is worthwhile. 
because when we, when we start going, oh, this is horrible, I don't like doing this to myself, we've got to understand why we're doing it. And we look out from ourselves. We don't, you know, it's that them eyes in us that are doing that. We want to do a sort of step outside and look at why we were, how we were, how we still are, why we act like we do when it's wrong. And transmute that into understanding of why we act in that way or why we react, we react, we want to learn to act with a conscious mind, with an awakened mind, and be aware of what's going on with ourselves. So, I've just done that one. You know, and, and Gurdjieff reminds us, man is a transforming machine, a kind of transmitting station of forces. We're like that aerial. We can pull in the signals, work on them and send them back out again but we need that transmitting station within us to be working properly. Otherwise it all comes in chaotically and doesn't work properly. And we just uh, don't use it for the better benefit of the universe and ourselves. And Gurdjieff reminds us in views from the real world, page 209, my copy, everything in the world is material and in, in accordance with universal law. Everything is in motion and constantly being transformed. The direction of this transformation is from the finest matter to the coarsest and vice versa. So, you know, we can have it, we're receiving it from the divine. Are we open enough, awake enough to feel it coming in? You know, whether it's from the angels or the, you know, the archangels or the divine himself, are we awake enough to receive them messages or uh, them energies to help ourselves work? Or we can get it from the coarsest, which is the lowest, which is, you know, the world <laughs> as it is, the world that isn't working in harmony with the universe, you know, and from our peers, our influences from the TVs or from the news or the newspapers, are we letting them kind of things disrupt us? Are we letting our families disrupt us? Are we letting our friends disrupt us, our work disrupt us and so on? And instead, when we're working on ourselves, when this disruption comes, when we're trying to work on ourselves, we can see why what this disruption is doing, why it's coming. So we always need to find the cause. You know, someone's being a bit off with you today. You know, we can't take it personally. That person's just in a funny mood and they're being off because something's happened to them. But we can't let what they're doing to us affect us or, you know, we don't want to be reactive to it we want to act with it you know this is all part of the being impartial we want to be impartial to things which is weird at first when you start being impartial when you start seeing what's happening everything makes sense of course we're quite different on different days we can be affected by things as well which is why we've got to collect all them eyes together with those different personalities within us and why they're acting like or feeling like that one day and being something different the next day and being aware of that. Is it helping yourself, the universe and the divine, or is it hindering your, your work, the work of the universe and all the laws that are going around making the harmony, putting disruption in, and is it helping his endlessness, the divine source? Right, let me carry on with that. Um, Quote from Views from the Real World. So we've got the direction of this transformation is from the finest matter to the coarsest matter and vice versa. Between these two limits, there are many degrees of density of matter. Moreover, this transformation of matter does not proceed evenly and consecutively. At some points in the development, there are, as it were, stops or transmitting stations. These stations are everything that can be called organisms in the broad sense of the word. The sun, the earth, man and microbe. So everything affects us and we affect everything. These stations are commutators. Commutators? These stations are commutators. Oh, I can't say that. <laughs> which transform matter both in its ascending movement when it becomes finer and in its descending movement towards greater density. So the finer the energy, 
you know, we're going upwards, the denser the energy, we're going downwards, you know, this is all part of the alchemy. We want to make ourselves finer vibrations, finer material in ourselves, not heavy and dense. We want to be light. So that we shine. Uh, I'll just turn the pages by accident. This transformation takes place purely mechanically. A substance needed by some entity may be taken by it and absorbed, thus serving the evolution or involution of that entity. Everything absorbs, that is, eats something else and also serves itself as food. This reciprocal exchange takes place in everything, in both organic and inorganic mate material, or matter, it says here, actually, um, not material at all. So everything's affecting everything. Everything eats everything. Everything eats itself, you know, kind of like that Ouroboros snake that's eaten, got its head stuck in its, a uh, towel stuck in its mouth. It's eating itself, but it's going round. We need to keep moving, you know, and, Gurdjieff talks about the three types of foods. You've got to be careful what we're breathing in, what we're eating as actual food, and the impressions we take in from outside. The impressions is what we see, what we witness, what we hear. How do we assimilate that as we take it in? Are we caught up on things? Are you eating shitty food? I tend to bless my food before I eat it. I try not to eat crap, and I try not to drink crappy water and things like that. But, you know, good blessing on it. Or I said before about uh, Masia Morimoto used to do the writing on his glasses or on your plates, do a nice symbol that means something good to you, energizing, peace, happiness, whatever, you know, it affects that food because everything affects everything. You know, my water bottle, I tried to put the OM sign, been, uh, you know, done, done the Enneagram on a few things. I love my ANK sign, the sign of life from the Egyptian way. Got a nice stamp of that that I sometimes stamp all over myself. I feel like I need some life force. You know, all these symbols are important to help us use. That's why they're there for us to use for those with ears to hear and eyes to see. Up way round, getting things around the wrong way today. Doesn't matter. It's a bit of a full moon, so it's a full moon craziness. <laughs> so this is from Ospensky in Search of the Miraculous. In the cosmic order, each class of creature feeds on a definite class of lower creature and is food for a definite class of higher creature. According to this diagram, man is hydrogen 24. He feeds on hydrogen 96 invertebrates and is himself food for hydrogen 6 archangels. The archangels are eating off us, but we want to give them good food, good energies, good vibes to send up to them. You know, everything's evolving whether it's an archangel or a little ant, everything is evolving along in this universe and we can help each and everything, ourselves, everything on this planet, everything in the universe, depending on how we transmute the energies, thoughts, feelings, actions that we're doing. It's all about the doing people and the intention in it, like magic. You know, it's all magic. Is our will strong enough to do this? Well, I hope it is. It's getting a bit dark, and so I'm going to leave now. But thank you for watching. Let's go forward in all the love and light towards creating and transforming ourselves into love and light. <laughs>